Would it be possible if we change the title of all of this from Christmas season to holiday season? Because I have a woke agenda. Yes. Um... <laughs> the Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 393. We're into December now of 2024. Happy Honda Days. I meet them. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. Welcome back, Crab fans. Hey, how was your Thanksgiving, pal? Oh, it was uh, it was good. There was almost a grease fire, apparently, at some point. But Oh, only, really? Only smoke, no flames, was the, was the quote given to me. So, uh, huh. <laughs> overall... <laughs> pretty pretty solid day watch some mediocre football ate some good food as is as is a tradition for for all of us here in uh, in the u.s you know i was thinking about um the the afternoon football game was like dallas and the giants or something mm-hmm. like that uh it's always dallas hosting the four the 415 game and it was like the fifth most watched regular season football game of all time <laughs> <laughs> Just because it was on Thanksgiving, and <laughs> but I was just like objectively one of the worst football games I've seen this year. Like it was awful. not well, like you know, uh, it wasn't like a turnover fest or anything. It was just two bad teams being incompetent against one mm-hmm. another. Fifth most watched football game of all times. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know, man. I don't understand anything anymore. We are uh, we're, WWE had a Survivor Series War Games this past weekend, though. Um, maybe a bit of a polarizing show. I'm not sure. Um, I'll get we'll get Liam's thoughts on that. We have the build to a Saturday night's main event. I don't know what year this is. <laughs> um, it is coming up next weekend, and AEW has their kind of a classic and a paper paper view that they are building towards the cutting out of classic is ongoing and uh, they're getting some messy drama with uh, GCW regarding uh, AEW running the Hammerstein ballroom this year or Hammerstein ballroom this year. So uh, start with WWE war games, survivor series, war games, uh, two war games matches on the same show. Uh, we've been doing it for a few years now. Um, I'm ready for the experiment to be over. <laughs> Um, I, I have no problem individually with either of the War Games matches and thought both were good in their own way. But just seeing the same, like, almost, let's see, the men's match was probably almost an hour and the women's match was about 35 minutes. You know, seeing an hour and a half of of the same thing on a three hour and 20 minute show. Uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit repetitive, and I don't need to see two War Games matches on the same show again. But overall, it was a show. Uh, what'd you think of it? Not great. Uh, I thought most of the wrestling on the show varied from boring to fine. All right, uh, women's match was kind of I thought was kind of sloppy. They <laughs> because we we have to. We have to we have to really galaxy brain this stuff. We were like, we're going to give the baby faces the man advantage or the woman advantage in war games for the women's match. And so to make that make sense, they had Naya go in first, because then at least if you're if you have an uneven amount there, you're still trying to fight the big stinky giant. Right. As as Vince might have called her in a previous uh, decade, Uh, not not casting aspersions about her. No, no, that's that's a Hulk Hogan, Vince McMahon praise. Sure. Absolutely. Anyway. so that was like their way of trying to make the man advantage thing make sense. Right. So you could still book it. So you could still book it like a regular war games match, even though the psychology is backwards. Right. Um, so they did their best, but I just thought Naya being in there for that long was not to the matches uh, credit. <laughs> she also didn't have a very good night. <laughs> no, she's like... not. Bailey was like yelling spots at her. 
and the camera is right there. So like you can you can hear it even more audibly than usual. Yeah, there's actually there's sometimes a cameraman in or always a cameraman in the ring uh, on that middle grate between the two rings. And uh, I mean, Bailey's the MVP of every match she's in for the most part. And uh, yeah, she was uh, this is not quite as bad as that Dolph Ziggler yelling spots in the Elimination <laughs> Chamber. You remember that? I do. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get Ryback and Mark Henry and whoever to do. Yeah. For almost eight years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the women's match to me was a, an example of, of a, it was a TJ Wilson masterclass <laughs> mm. in that it was laid out absolutely perfectly. And the way you would lay out one of those matches designed to maximize the reaction for everything and asking as little of the performers as possible. <laughs> it was I I just looked at that and I said, well, a high level wrestling IQ put this together. And that's mm-hmm. fine. <laughs> um the execution of that, yeah, a little sloppy. Um I don't know. I liked I, I also th- I also am tired of the of um uh, Rhea Ripley and then Raquel Rodriguez, frankly, <laughs> and yes. and them not selling anything ever, and them having like multiple roar and baby face monster spots in the same match. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just given all of those things, however, I thought TJ, I assume he put the match together, uh, did as good a job as humanly possible, and I like the end when everybody started hitting a big move and. EO is absolutely insane in these things. She did the the moonsault with the trash can. Uh, I don't know how she does it. I think maybe she, she holds on to the string uh, and keeps the <laughs> trash can on her head. Uh, Tiffany did a swanton off the pod. Uh, but yeah. Then there was a lot of other stuff on this show. <laughs> LA Knight and Shinsuke Nakamura had a match out of 1982 WWF. Pejorative. Blue Jeans British Bulldog won the US title. <laughs> That's what you're calling Shinsuke these days, right? Yeah, he is. He's just so beyond washed. <laughs> like, well, as like it there turns are out, to this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a level beyond Finn Balor washed. Yes. Which is Finn is, Finn is washed and checked out. Mm-hmm. I don't know that Shin is checked out like i think when he gets to the building like he he you know he he's into it mm-hmm. he would just would rather be surfing and taking <laughs> nature photos right <laughs> it's like wrestling might be his third favorite thing but he you know he still likes it <laughs> yes i at no time when i'm watching finn Balor am i like this is this man's passion in <laughs> <laughs> we know his passion is being a wife guy okay. that's absolutely correct you know, uh, let's see what else is on this show. Uh, LA Knight lost. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, bad on. omen. He dropped the belt on the ground on his way to the ring. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> did not seem super jazzed about it. Which, you know, if I were LA Knight and I were like, God damn, I'm a better wrestler than this guy, <laughs> like, no offense to LA Knight, like, his shtick's really over, and I, I, I am generally entertained by him, but like, as a worker, he's he's straight out of 2006. And but he's he's working circles around Nakamura at this point. <laughs> like, yeah, right. I mean, you're kind of you're asking a lot. Like, I don't know. I'm fine with L.A. Knight being slotted where he is. Maybe like, was there a, a moment where he could have gone higher up the card? Oh, for sure. And they mm-hmm. just they decided. I mean, he, he did get the um, the Saudi match against Roman. But he, he was the only guy who, after losing, correctly pointed out that Roman cheated to beat him. It's true. Yeah. So, like, I, ultimately, I'm fine with where he ended up in life. Sure. <laughs> and, and better so, than being the male model's manager. Not as funny, but better. Yeah. Um. I I freaking love the male models. Them and Johnny TV being paired is like. <laughs> Might be Tony Khan's best booking decision of 2024. It might be his only good booking decision of 2024. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah. So uh, 
So ultimately, I'm fine with uh, with these guys having a little United States title program, and um, at least it's something for LA to do. And he can talk about in his promos now how how shit beat him and then missed at him. Sure, I don't. Know. Yeah, why not? Uh, uh, Braun Breaker won a fun little three way over Sheamus and Ludwig Kaiser. Um, I don't know when we're doing Sheamus winning the Intercontinental title, but uh, hopefully somewhat soon. <laughs> Every other year, this guy has like severe spinal stenosis that's ending his career, and then he comes back for another run. So, like, I I wouldn't wait too much longer. Like, yeah, got a lot of miles on on that body. His oh yeah, a million percent. Yeah. Uh, which did you enjoy the match, or you just thought it was just there? Like, I thought it was um. I don't know. <laughs> it was fine. Yeah, I, I, mean, enjoy, I thought it was I solid. It. Yeah. yeah, it was a WWE three way with I think maybe it was more hard hitting and maybe more effort put in than you would expect for three mid card guys having a WWE match for the Intercontinental Title in twenty twenty four. They everybody worked hard and it was hard hitting and fast paced. So it was it was yeah it was a good little match. Braun is a freakish athlete. Mm-hmm. Seamus is um in his somehow became a good worker at 45 years old. <laughs> Never seen anything like it quite like it before. And Ludwig Kaiser is really good. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there we go. I, I uh, would give that the the award I once I believe gave to Jeff Cobb versus Naito in a G1. It's the nice match that I had a nice time watching. <laughs> Beautiful. It's not it's not. I'm not giving it a star rating. It's not going to be on anybody's match of the year list, but it was a nice little match that I had a nice time watching. Yeah. Uh, World Heavyweight title match, Gunther against Damian Priest. We got dueling Gunther and Priest chance at one point. I also looked at this, and you can, um, if you want to nitpick Damian Priest's hamish selling mm. of his of his left arm, I will allow that. Um, I didn't think it, the match necessarily played to his strengths as a performer. On the other hand, I, I looked at this and I was like, you know, I think Gunther is a, a wrestling savant. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and I think uh, his fingerprints are all over this. And I don't know who else put together. I haven't looked at the actually I did look at the producers, but I don't remember who helped produce this. But uh, again, I just looked at the layout of this. And it's like a high level wrestling IQ put this match together. And Gunther's always going to get the crowd at the end. And yeah, I mean, he's just he'll 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 give the guys wrestling exactly as much as it needs as the, the match needs to be good. And uh, I don't know, it was a little long. Priest was a little hammy, but I like the idea of this. What did you think? Yeah, I didn't like it very much. Uh, <laughs> I just thought it was kind of long and boring. And yeah, I don't think selling for that long is to Priest's strong suit. Um, not that the guys didn't work hard, not that they weren't hitting each other hard. They definitely were. Um, but yeah, I just don't think it's it's not playing to his strength, nor do I think it would have played to Gunther's strengths if they reversed roles and Gunther was selling the whole time. Uh, I don't think that would have been good either. So, I mean, they did right. I, I think you're right in that it was laid out fine and they did the best. Maybe I would have shaved five or six minutes off of it uh, and just let him let him go at it and, and just have like a, a fun sprint instead of what they did. But it was, it, yeah, it wasn't the worst, again, not the worst match I've seen. Just didn't really enjoy it. And then Finn Balor came out and cost Damian Priest the world title again. And I thought about burning Stanford, Connecticut to the ground. I see. Did you see uh, in Minecraft? My... Yes. Yes. Very important to note that. Did you uh, see recently that uh, I'm a I'm a fan of the Manchester City, so is the Manchester City Football Club. And uh, Did I see that you're a fan of them? Well, anyway, I'm just giving that its background. Oh, sure. I know you. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, their coach recently in a press conference, he was asked about uh, the poor form of the team lately. They have a ton of injuries. European football is absolutely maddening in that you have your domestic schedule, which is uh, 38 games. And then if you finish in the top four in your league, you also get to play in the Champions League. 
and that's another like 16 games or so. So it's like you're just playing games all the time, pretty much year round. And uh, anyway, they're uh, they've won a lot of championships and mm-hmm. they're they're all broken down now. Anyway, they did a press conference with the guy with the coach, Pep Guardiola, and uh, he English is not the man's first language. Mm-hmm. And so they asked him about how, how do you feel about the team? And he's like, uh, uh, lately, and he's like, uh, I want to harm myself. <laughs> oh, my. Very specific wording. Uh-huh. But then the, any, every, they had to do, like, damage control press releases afterwards. And he's like, oh, and, you know, I was just Josh, and I don't actually want to harm myself. <laughs> it's like, ugh, I'm worried. Man. <laughs> That's sad. Yeah. Anyway, I forget what brought that up. Me saying that I had angry uh- thoughts when... Finn Balor came out to continue his never ending feud with Damian Priest. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. I thought maybe you wanted to harm yourself and I was gonna try to talk you out of it and issue a press release. No, I wanted to <laughs> I, never mind. <laughs> no, you wanted to harm other people. Yes. I understand. In Minecraft. <laughs> In Minecraft. I don't understand what Minecraft is. I'm 40 years old. All right. I know it's a video game. Sort of like Lego, but in video game form. You build things, and also there are ghouls. That's the part I don't understand. There's also like a competitive part of it that I don't quite understand. But there's a, there's a built move, also a mode where you just build things. So, um, is this why no one under thirty has ever listened to this show? <laughs> <laughs> seems seems plausible. All right. Got some numbers in this week, everybody. They are mostly very good. However, <laughs> there's there was one metric that showed that no one under the age of thirty listens to this program. <laughs> well, when you consider the median age of who uh, watches wrestling on TV these days, yeah, we're still we still skew younger than that, at least. Mostly, yeah. Mostly, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Okay. Uh, back to the Survivor Series show. The end of it was uh, a men's war games match where uh, no one wanted to harm themselves and everyone wanted to harm each other. Um, Roman Reigns and his bloodline and CM Punk against Solo Sko and his bloodline and Bronson Reed. Who boy. 42 minutes, weapons, drama, acting. Um, overall, I enjoyed this. Uh, even if it was a little long, and even if I'm gonna forget it, uh, next week, what would you think of it? I think I think by the end, when everybody's in the ring doing moves and hitting each other with stuff, it was it was pretty fun. Um, there's a lot of things that this kind of just goes back to how WWE does war games in general. I wish you would just have stuff in the ring. I think AEW does it too, where guys like before they go in the cage, go under the ring to get stuff. It just puts a real lull in the match to do that sure. um and again look i guess that's part of the way you kill time um but you have to do that and then you and it's just a lot of not not particularly interesting wrestling happening in there for a while yeah and then like I think jacob fatu was the mvp as he has been of almost everything he's been involved with the man's unbelievable since, uh, since coming into this company um so he was really good in it. Uh, the whole match is kind of built around if Punk and Roman are going to get along or not. Right. And they did. Spoiler alert. <laughs> so so it ends with Roman and all of his guys beating the heels asses and pinning and Roman pin solo clean after everybody hits a move on solo. And then Michael Cole is like, well, the feud continues. <laughs> Solo is still the tribal chief after all. And you're like, what are we doing then? What was any of this for? Why why would why would you do war games in the middle <laughs> of this story? Yeah. Other than that, it's because we broke our brains somewhere in the last tw- in the last 20 to 30 years. And we don't do war games because it's time to do war games. We do war games because the calendar page flips. Yeah, there is that. That's uh That's that's worth pointing out. Um, let's uh, again. You said something that I wanted to uh, follow up on, and my brain is just not working today. That's, that's uh, troubling. Fatu, the punk Roman stuff. Oh, 
Uh, so at the end, they everybody's but they take out the heels uh, one at a time until they're all fall five baby faces are left with uh, solo. And then they all hit something resembling a finisher on him. Mm -hmm. Great. I think that's how the war games match should end. Yeah. All of the baby faces triumphant. They vanquished all the other bad guys one at a time. Poor Bronson Reed, Adam Copeland himself. Yeah. Coming off the cage. The top of the cage, unbelievable. I mean, you know, that guy was just like, "Look, I'm I'm going to do whatever it takes to to get this crowd reaction," and mm -hmm. and he did, and he yeah. But uh, I thought everyone here did a really nice job at the end of selling. Okay, this was a freaking brutal match, <laughs> and we're tired and we're exhausted, but we managed to eke out the win. I don't know. I I thought everybody was good by the end of it uh, to your point wikipedia says this went almost 42 minutes um if we were to shave and i'm sure that they do work that clock but if we were to shave those uh waiting periods to two minutes and 30 seconds or two minutes instead of three minutes would anyone notice <laughs> probably not yeah so then you can cut nine minutes off each match <laughs> right there would be less time where i'm watching like Jim Uso and Tamatanga do spots <laughs> together. Tonga uh Tonga Lo was so bad in this match, also. Did you notice he he couldn't, he couldn't get his table in the ring? Yes, he did have a little a little issue there. He put he brought two tables into the ring. I'm sure there was a table spot. I don't remember it off the top of my head. Uh well, Jimmy and Bronson both did splashes through tables. Yeah. Uh, I remember Bronson uh, splashing on uh, Roman there, and I, I just don't remember Jimmy. But uh, yeah, he brought two tables in, and then he couldn't get the tables in, and Jacob had to had to pull the tables into the ring. Well, you know, that that was the other thing I hated is they do this thing where it's come down. Roman's the last guy to get in, and Solo gets in and locks the the cage and throws away the key. And mm -hmm. you're like, oh my god! So the baby faces are in dire straits now. It's five on four. Roman can't get in. Roman just walks right up to the cage and climbs in. Yes. What was the point of that? Just kill uh, ninety seconds. Uh, I guess. Yeah. Stupid. Yeah. Uh, I can't argue. <laughs> I can't argue. It didn't make me mad though. Whichever Abyss or Pete Williams or whoever pitched that spot, they shouldn't get meat in the balls. Mm. Um, this had a lot of Paul Eamon uh, uh, hallmarks. <laughs> um, and then Paul, of course, came out at the end. That was nice. He, uh, out. he, didn't, he didn't come out of the closet. He just, I mean, I mean, he came into the, he came into the arena. He rolled down. I'm, he's wider oh. than ever. It's a, it's only worth bringing up because the man's got to be what pushing sixty now. Yes, and, I am genuinely and, concerned for him. Yeah, I mean, how many um, you know, three hundred pound seventy year old guys do you know? Not a lot. All right, well, let's get on that. Paul is uh, fifty nine years he's, old. He's got the money. Just get on Ozempic like everybody else. Oh yeah, did you see Jim Gaffigan? Yes, I haven't watched the uh, his new comedy special yet, but I'm assuming that he talks about Ozempic in it because suddenly he's just like a normal shaped guy. Mm -hmm. Looks like he was when he was on Maryland Lottery commercials <laughs> in the nineties. Yeah, over thirty years ago. Yeah. All right. Uh, Saturday night's main event. We have matches for that. Um, it is Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens for the undisputed WWE championship. It is Gunther and Finn Balor for the world heavyweight championship. And it is <laughs> Liv Morgan and EO Sky for the women's world championship. Uh, am I forgetting anything that they've announced for this so far? Uh, finals of the... Oh, the United States, the Women's United States title tournament. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so that's Saturday night's main event. I don't know. I don't think this will. Um, uh, I don't think this will last um, quite. 
I don't expect that we'll be doing uh pushed Saturday night's main event build a year from now, but maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. I mean, as long as they keep it on NBC, they'll have to try a little bit, you'd think. But then as as we've said, history shows us otherwise. <laughs> yes. Raw was like one of the best Raws of all time this week. And I'm not being facetious at all. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Um, And uh, I've been falling asleep recently during Raw. So <laughs> I've seen like, uh, I don't know, an hour of Raw since it went to two hours because I just, it, grotesque tour. Love him. Puts me to sleep. It's just like very soothing. Anyway. Again, I've said too Don't much. Don't worry. Michael Cole and Pat McAfee are going to be calling Raw when it goes to Netflix. So, You know, I forgot to... You mentioned Michael Cole <laughs> at the end of the War Games match. Yes. Saying the feud must continue. <laughs> yes. The man's instincts are just awful. I don't understand how you can be in this business for almost 30 years and not have picked up anything. <laughs> Like I want to say like three times between the start of the match and then like during the match as guys were coming in, he flip flopped on whether it was a good thing that Roman's team was had five individual entrances <laughs> and whether or not that showed that they were uniform or, or or they were giving everyone their space to be individuals or if it was a sign that they're not really a team and they're in disarray. Right. Like he, yeah. said, he said it like three different times three different things about the same topic within like an eight minute period. <laughs> right. And it's like, Hey, everybody's on board now. Right. When we're watching these shows, uh, we're willing to forget about, uh, you know, the guy who's gone now <laughs> and all, all of the alleged sex crimes and all of the lawsuits and people want to just, you know, enjoy these shows now. And the booking is like, um, barely adequate <laughs> and and it's and it the result is like the best raw in 15 years <laughs> <laughs> with barely adequate booking yes um but yeah mike when you got mike cole out there um yeah as you say contradicting himself three times in eight minutes it's like well that's a problem he's i like i like cole but this is a problem <laughs> is he 60 no, he's not as old as um he makes it out that he is. Okay. Um he's in his like he's in his mid 50s. Right. But... Just like maybe he just needs to slow down a little bit, you know? Like not saying he needs to go away completely, but you know. He will turn 58 on Sunday. Oh, well, happy birthday to to Michael Cole. Uh, but yeah, maybe maybe it's time that we take our foot off the gas when it comes to lead announcer Michael Cole. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I mean, the problem is you got lead announcer Vic Joseph in the wings. Well, you got you got Joe for now. Let him run the show. Yeah, the problem is Joe has a real job too, and like True. Uh, he's not reliable. He's not indoctrinated. Well, he's right, right, right. He's a pro, he's a professional broadcaster. He's not a professional wrestling guy, <laughs> so he's got stuff to do, with places to be on Saturdays. Sure, sure. <laughs> anyway, regardless, uh, the big thing from Raw, I think, was the New Day uh, kicking Biggie out. Yeah, which uh, led to I don't know. I think the the consensus is I don't know how you do that angle if Biggie's never coming back to wrestle. So. Biggie's probably got the okay to come back and wrestle at least um, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but what'd you think of Raw? Or what specifically what'd you think of the New Day angle? Because it's, uh, you're breaking up a group that's been together for 10 years that have always been baby faces that probably should never break up. But also, <laughs> it's a thing that people were talking about for a couple of days. So what'd you think of it? Yeah, I mean, that is probably a sign. Because so much of wrestling in in the modern day just kind of washes over us and we talk about it on the show. And then the next week, we don't remember that it happened. And we sit here going, who's the U.S. champion? Precisely. Um, so having something that did stick out as genuinely memorable uh, was was exciting. And I thought I thought some of the dialogue in the segment was a little bit over overwritten. Sure. But. I thought Woods and Kofi were really, really good. 
And it's taking something that I would maybe consider a negative of the show for the last couple of years, i.e. Woods and Kofi just kind of hanging out and spinning right. their wheels. And they said, well, the reason we've been doing that is because we were waiting for Big E to come back. And Big E never came back. So it's really his fault that we're, we've are we been so <laughs> lame for the last five years. Right, right. It's like, okay, I mean, fine. At least you acknowledged it and you tried to justify it. And it was a surprise too, because everybody thought, oh, Xavier's going to turn and, you know, Kofi right. and, and threaten to attack Big E and Kofi's going to make the save. And then Xavier and Kofi are going to feud or whatever, which you could have done that. And it would have been a lower card raw feud for a couple of weeks. Yeah. But um, this sets up a lot more interesting possibilities, which is, yeah, you have, you can make the new day this, but, or if they change their name or whatever, Kofi and Woods can go be an imposing heel duo and maybe win the tag belts. I mean, Finn and forehead guy certainly aren't using them. Sure. So, and then, you know, mania or rumble or whenever Biggie's ready to come back, you, you get him a partner and you set up a tag title match for mania. That sounds really good and exciting. Obviously it's most exciting just because, Hey, it would be great to see Big E be able to come back and do anything physically again. But uh, in the meantime, it's also it gives, gives Kofi and woods a shot in the arm that they both desperately needed because even the, the, the baseline version of this, everyone thought we were getting where it was just woods is going to go heel and the group's going to break up. Like that wasn't really going to go anywhere. So <laughs> this at least has like some exciting prospects of Kofi and, and, and Xavier as heels. And then maybe eventually leading to the big E comeback, whenever that is. Got Drew McIntyre back on raw. Mm-hmm. Got uh, some Sam. more. Yeah. We got some more Seth and punk stuff. Um, I don't know how those guys had one of the worst brawls I've ever seen. But they did, but they sure they, did. They squared up like Mrs. Dad when they went to go punch <laughs> each other. Like uh the well, intense punk, <laughs> punk squared up like how CM Punk actually squares up in real fights. Yes. As it turns out. Yes. Uh we're getting women's intercontinental title. We knew that. We have the bracket for that. It's the most uh, dire thing um, I've ever seen. Raw's women's division is Okay. Uh, Dakota Kai. Lovely, lovely person. Mm -hmm. No one has a bad word to say about. Mm -hmm. Um, She spent a good chunk of her career injured. True. And And they've never shown an interest in pushing her (laughs) when she is around. And they fired her. (laughs) Yes. All these things are true. Uh, She's in a match with Shayna Baszler, who um, mid-40s um, she got a push in Paul's NXT, mm-hmm. and so you think maybe they'll, there's a possibility that she has a future on the main roster, and then it's like, well, Paul has been in charge, pretty much unencumbered, we think, <laughs> for almost what uh, a year now. Just about. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the Vince stuff I think broke in January. So. It was Royal Rumble weekend, right? Yeah. Uh, so just about a year, and it's not like Shane has been winning titles. Uh, they're in a match with Katana Chance, <laughs> noted party girl Katana Chance. Right, loves to shoot back straight whiskey and yes. let loose. Yeah. <laughs> Delightful. <laughs> uh, uh, another match in this tournament is Zoe Stark. Uh, it's got the good, the dreaded good hand tag. Uh, and the most entertaining thing she's ever done in her career is the videos she's doing with Shayna and um, Sonya Deville right now on social media on their social media accounts. Have you seen these? I don't think so. The joke is obviously that uh, Shayna and Sonya are gay, mm. and and they're in a group, the Pure Fusion Collective, with Zoe Stark, who is not gay. But she dresses just like them. And so they're like, wait, aren't you? And she's like, yeah, I'm part of the team. And we're like, but I don't think you know what we mean. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. It's it's mildly amusing. The joke is she's not gay, but they think she's gay. I see. 
Or maybe they think she doesn't know she's gay and she's gay. Anyway, regardless, she's in a match with Raquel Rodriguez and Kane Carter. Raquel Rodriguez is pushed as uh, one of the multiple female diesels on this show. Um, Kaden Carter is in a tag team with Ksana Chance. Alba Fire, Kyrie Sane, and Natalia. Natalia came back after a hiatus like two months ago, and we haven't seen her on TV. <laughs> they tried to make everyone think she was leaving to go to AEW so they could get a PR win when they re-signed her. Yes. And then they announced she was re-signing and proceeded to send her home for several months. She's been in on speed a couple of times, I think. Oh. oh or she's like okay. in the speed tournament. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> but I guess she'll be back on TV soon. And then the other match in the tournament is L- Lyra Valkyria. Uh, I'm a big fan, but mm-hmm. they've already sent her back to NXT once since they brought her to the main roster. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Zelina Vega, uh, manager who should never wrestle and always wrestles, <laughs> and Ivy Nile. Again, somehow has gotten the dreaded good hand tag. Um, and obviously it's just there on the roster. So dire intercontinental women's intercontinental title tournament. Yeah, probably Raquel wins it. I guess just because like nobody else that's part of a push act at all is in it. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, she's she's the only one in a tournament anywhere near being pushed. <laughs> it's it's unreal. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, what happened in WWE this week. AEW? Uh, any other WWE stuff you want to get into? NXT was, uh, they had their uh, pay-per-view this weekend, and uh, I'm not excited for it. That's great. Uh, Eric Bischoff was on the show this week, and it did the lowest 18 to 49 of the year for them so i i will always like eric uh, the, that's fine he's not i'm not saying he's a good person i'm just saying i'll, I'll listen always if we only liked wrestling personalities <laughs> that were good people it's a it's biggie and that's about it <laughs> like it's it's a short list and i, I don't would, i don't I even would, feel comfortable <laughs> saying that about Big <laughs> e. i would i would put biggie on that list i would put becky lynch on that list and then I would start sweating. Yeah, it's a look. I just just I think a good piece of advice for anyone is just assume any athlete or pro wrestler or celebrity you like believes or does at least one thing that would just ruin them if you found out <laughs> about it. Just assume they're already doing one of those things. Sure. They have a Lola Vice and Jada, Jada Parker in an NXT Underground match. <laughs> Sure, a little this, something for the perverts. This sweet Jada Parker, uh, is um, uh, uh, she's from Florida. And she has a um a mixed ethnic background, I believe, and uh, she used a racial slur on NXT this week, and it's like four days later, and I kind of can't believe that this wasn't a story <laughs> oh i missed this <laughs> like in a there you go in a heated segment like setting up her nxt underground match which is where they take the ropes off and they do shane mcmahon's fight club uh there's mm-hmm. been like one good underground match ever and it was natty against lolo vice anyway so they're doing lolo vice and jada parker uh in an underground match at the pay-per-view this saturday and uh, so they they do a brawl or whatever. I think Jaden knocks out Lola, and then the referee is a, a also a man of uh, either he's either an African American gentleman or, or he is also uh, a mixed ethnic background, and he's like trying to push her away from uh, the 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 lady she just knocked out, and she's like, uh, "Racial slur, please." <laughs> you know you know or you get out of my way or something along those lines like it was off the cuff it wasn't like into a mic it may have actually been into a microphone anyway Mm -hmm. i i can't believe this isn't a story by the way (laughs) it's it's not my word she can use the word if she wants to i just i can't believe that like it got a little bit of buzz on twitter the night it happened and then nothing 
So I guess nobody cares. And we've all decided to um to let Jada Parker off the hook. All right. Whatever. NXT Tag Team Championship on the line on that show. Uh, Nathan Fraser and Axiom against Miles Bourne and Tavion Heights. Trick Williams against Rich Holland for the NXT Championship. Ugh. Rich, Ho- Rich oh. Holland is the worst. Trick Williams <laughs> is great. It's like for the last like year or whatever, when I tune into NXT, which is usually only the pay-per-views, right? every third pay-per-view, mm-hmm. uh, Trick Williams is like the most charismatic guy on the show by far. Yeah. And they've just been pairing them with good workers or good hands, as one might yeah. say. Like a Sean Spears, like an Ethan Page, like uh, Carmelo Hayes before they called him up. You know, just people that can get a good match out of him and maybe teach him a little, like teach him selling and some basics that because he clearly already has all of this. And it's like, right now you're pa- uh, pairing him with Ridge Holland, a guy who famously is bad at wrestling. Yes. Not only did he... Uh, break the neck of the aforementioned Big E. He's also so not interesting as a character that they sent him back to NXT, one yes. might remember. Yes. So he is doubly uh, not fit for the job of being a pay-per-view opponent for Trick Williams, in my opinion. I'm not going to argue with you. The guy's 36 also. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? Like the joke with Andre Chase in NXT is that like he's the he's the college professor or whatever, but right, he's a million years old, <laughs> and he has all these college kids hanging around. And it's like part of the joke is that he's old. Mm-hmm. So it's just never acknowledged that Rich Holland is like my age. <laughs> <laughs> it's just on the show, and then we have the Iron Survivor Challenge matches on this show. A concept of uh, uh, born in <laughs> born in Jeff Jarrett's brain. Uh, the there's a penalty box. There's a 25 minute clock. Whoever gets the most falls. Um, in the women's match, it's Sol Ruka, Stephanie Becker, Zaria, Julia, and Ren Sinclair. Ren Sinclair, that name has to go. She's good, but that name has to go. And in the men's Iron Survivor Challenge, Wesley, Javon Evans, Nathan Fraser, Ethan Page, and Eddie Thorpe. Although they did an angle at the end of XT. Where Eddie Thorpe was attached back attacked backstage and he may not make it. So they put him in the match on Tuesday and then they possibly took him out of the match on Tuesday. How I backstage I, attacks have there been in like the last eight days in wrestling. Yeah, it's quite a few. That's NXT coming up this weekend. AEW, we mentioned the uh, Continental Classic and the build to World's End. Um I don't think Dynamite bothered me as much as it usually does this week. I don't know. What did you think of the show? Yeah, I thought it was mostly fine. Um, there was some stuff. Uh, we we talked about this off the air. It's one of the first times Moxley... I mean, he sold for Orange Cassidy in the match. It's the first time he's been laid out on television in what feels like a long time. Um, when, when Hangman and Orange Cassidy and Jay White sort of teamed up to beat him and the rest of the green trouser collective down. He took Uh, three finishers and rolled to the floor. Right. Which is about as much. Yeah. About Uh, as much selling as he does these days. The baby faces got, and hangman got to stand tall. So that was like, that was, that's a breath of fresh air. I enjoyed swerve Swerve is who just came off like his third straight loss on pay-per-view uh, is trying to rebuild himself. And so they did what they almost never do, which is let him just run through somebody. <laughs> Max Caster uh, in this case. Right. Which is fine because even if you think Max Caster could be something, who knows? I don't. Um, right now, he's not. <laughs> right now, he's a tag team guy that's about to, that appears to be headed for a breakup with his tag partner. So he can get destroyed on television in five minutes and Swerve can take a missile drop kick from him and completely no sell it. And that's fine and good, in fact. So I liked that. The Continental Classic matches were all fine. Um, it was kind of a weird dynamic because it's like the opener is Kyle Fletcher and Shelton, which is the two heels. But uh, and then the main event being Brody King and uh, Claudio, which was fun. That was a fun uh, beefy boy match. But yeah, like, I don't think anything was earth shatteringly good on the show, but it was serviceable and everything pretty much 
was used to set up something either for one of the next couple of weeks dynamites or the pay-per-view so it felt like everything has had a point and they were very video package happy they're you know talking about feuds and the tournament overall and why this match is happening and all of the things that you know people complained about their shows two years ago uh not doing so uh yeah it was it was fine i thought it was fine they also they were in a smaller building and by by and large you could hear the crowd and they were reacting and into the show so it turns out that makes a big difference (laughs) turns out it's probably better to maybe run smaller buildings and let the crowd that's there react and enjoy the show as opposed to having 1500 people scattered across a you know 8,000 seat arena yeah that's fine um we famously uh don't talk about ratings on the show uh three of the five least viewed dynamite episodes ever in the last five weeks Mm. is this anything again we've talked before sorry uh uh, asking a rhetorical question and then answering it Mm -hmm. uh the 1.5 million people or whatever who turned who tuned in for the dynamite premiere, I feel like they're still around. It's just that they're not watching the show on Wednesday night live anymore. And maybe that's the difference. 200,000 people stopped watching the show live with uh, MJF and Adam Cole. And uh, there have been hovering around, hovering around 600,000 since. And the last 10 week average is 597. So I think this pe- there's still a million people watching on DVR. Anyway, do you think, uh, uh, the video packages and the Continental Classic and all that, um, good or bad for uh, for viewership? It's really hard to say because understanding what does or doesn't work, sort of like understanding the median voting habits of the American people, sure feels unknowable a lot of the times as to what they want. I know there's a lot of, you know evidence and peer groups and things over the years that suggest that wrestling fans want to see wrestling on these wrestling shows. Yeah. Um, So I am all, I think that's good, but also you've put on a pretty lackluster show for six months. So even if these, you know, the last two or three, four weeks, even if you think those shows have all been good, which I don't, but if, if the last two weeks with the continental classic kicking off have been good, uh, that's you're still maybe if you continue to make good shows, maybe in another six months, you'll see stuff start ticking back up. But right now you're probably dealing with the fallout of like whatever they did all summer. <laughs> if in fact wrestling fans can be swayed by good or bad television and aren't just creatures of habit that will watch every week until one week, they just suddenly stop, which is what it all often feels like to me. Um, so yeah. Look, they're getting on Max in January. We've talked before about how we think, you know, being that accessible was such a big get for WWE on its latest boom in popularity. Not that I think AEW is going to have the same success, but it won't hurt them to have, you know, it be a more readily available product on, you know, non-traditional television either. So, um, you know, hopefully... <laughs> Hopefully, uh, yeah, it's hard, hard for me to tell. I think in general, it's a good idea to put more wrestling on your wrestling show. And you, I mean, and the matches should be happening for a reason for the most part. Um, and sometimes that reason can just be these guys want to prove that they're better than the other guy. Like it doesn't have to necessarily always be, uh, you know, Daniel Garcia tying Jack Perry to his to his old truck and, and whatever. Like you don't you don't have to do that stuff. You don't have to do vignettes and and shakespeare in the park you can just have two guys that don't like each other deciding to fight each other so we'll see (laughs) we'll see if more wrestling is in fact what the fans want if they put their money where their mouth is as as tony khan famously uh challenged wrestling fans to do a year ago when he first introduced the continental classic that show kicked off this week with I'm not going to talk about the whole show. I just want to illustrate uh, it was Shelton Benjamin in a Continental Classic match, and I don't remember who Shelton was wrestling at this point. Kyle Fletcher, ah, uh, of course the Proto Star. How could I forget? Mm-hmm. Because the main character of AEW, Don Callis, was on commentary for the match. <laughs> Ugh. Um, I just thought this is this is ratings death. <laughs> 
<laughs> they put they open the show with Pyro and Ballyhoo, and then they do a continent a long continental classic video package, and then they go to Kyle Fletcher and Shelton Benjamin. And I'm just like, this is death. <laughs> yeah, this apparently, is death. apparently they put all the good continental matches on Rampage, it looks like this week. Yeah, they stacked up Rampage for some reason. I don't know. I mean, I got no problem with it, but <sighs> yeah. So uh, the other brew, ha ha. If I can evoke a little French, please do. This week was uh, AEW and GCW. So AEW booked uh, Hammerstein, Hammerstein Ballroom for uh, a collision at the end of this month. And GCW was ticked because they're getting back on pay-per-view in January and doing another show from there. And uh, there were uh, words back and forth. And Ricky Starks. (sighs) Ricky Starks is doing is, I don't know. I'm just a little boy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Act in all his interviews where he's like, Mm -hmm. I don't know why I've been put on the bench. (laughs) Mm-hmm, I, mm-hmm. I sure hope AEW lets me wrestle soon. Uh huh. Uh-huh. It's, like, it's like, dude, you did something, right? <laughs> you did something that pissed somebody off, and it was beyond okay. So your security footage of you at the Royal Rumble got leaked, <laughs> right? It's like you did, you did something anyway. He was going to work GCW, and then he went on a, on a podcast and. I did an interview, but it didn't help him. And then Effie, who works for GCW, did an interview on another podcast where he talked about Tony Khan, how Tony Khan's dad pays him to stay away from his real businesses, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, this, uh, this, if you're GCW, hey man, I'd be pissed if, uh, if a bigger company was coming in a month before me running the same venue. Seems, and, seems like you should be pissed at the venue, though, right? For like allowing another wrestling company to book that closely to you. That's fair, yeah. Or maybe you should have a better lawyer who should who should put a clause in one of these things yeah. that says, "No, you can't have another wrestling show a month before or a month after we're there." I mean, that's standard. <laughs> that's standard, right? Uh, we've talked about it a little bit on this show with WWE and AEW. Like right. AEW was coming to town a month after WWE, and they couldn't advertise until after WWE had been here. And it's like, mm-hmm. um, but anyway, so uh, this this led to a brouhaha between AEW and GCW. AEW pulled Starks from the GCW shows he was advertised for. He's since been advertised for other indies. So it's not like they're saying you can't work. It's they're just saying you can't work for us or for for (laughs) GCW. I don't know. It's really strange, uh, the whole situation. But uh, GCW star uh, Zack Ryder, Matt Cardona, it's kind of disrespectful to call him Zack Ryder. He's been Matt Cardona for much longer now, it feels like. (laughs) But uh, he is um, is, uh, going to work. Ring of Honor show, final battle. <laughs> Hammerstein going against Chris Jericho for the Ring of Honor world title. Uh, funny how all this worked out. And uh, people are insisting this is not some elaborate work for uh, dual publicity. But it kind of worked out that way. Anyway, thoughts on uh, Ricky Starks. Ricky Starks getting himself taken off of uh, GCW shows. AEW and GCW running the same venue within a month of each other. And then Cardona, a GCW guy, coming in to work an AEW slash ROH shot against Chris Jericho. What do you think? Uh, Yeah, like in general, I am of the belief that if you are a quote unquote independent contractor and your main employer is not using you, you should be able to work wherever you want. So I'm not going to cheerlead for AEW pulling Starks from those shows because they were mad at something Effie said on a podcast. That being said, if you work for that company uh, and you are using uh, multiple people from AEW, I maybe wouldn't go publicly antagonize the guy. Uh, Seems like that was maybe poor uh, form. And look, Effie is not the owner of GCW. Uh, Brett Lauderdale or nobody else besides Effie endorsed Effie's comments. 
right. as far as I know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you can say that he's taking it out on the whole company just because he doesn't like what one guy said about him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, generally speaking, billionaires are not known for having thick skin. So, uh, yeah, he hurt Tony's feelings. And so Tony said, OK, well, I'm not going to let you play with my toys anymore. Yes. But also, I mean, there was a blood sport show, which is it's not I mean, it's not really promoted heavily as a GCW show, but it is a GCW show. Right. Uh, that had both WWE and AEW people on it like three weeks ago. Like Marina Shafir and John Moxley were on it, and one of the NXT girls was in in the opener of that show. Carmen Petrovic, I believe. Right. So it's like GCW is this weird, like, like neutral zone indie right. currently. Um, so I don't know if this is them trying to go the TNA route and just throw in more directly with the World Wrestling Federation, which isn't the worst idea. Or yeah, if again maybe they're just mad about the Hammerstein ballroom thing, which again, yeah, it sucks. It sucks that that AEW did that. They're going to basically run three shows because they're running, they're running final battle there. They're riding yep. collision the next night. And then they're taping the dynamite that Sunday. So they're running it three days in a row, a month before GCW. Like that sucks uh, for, for GCW. Yeah. But it's also like, it's not illegal. <laughs> right. Like, and yeah, it is probably on Brett Lauderdale for not being able to get any kind of exclusivity window. Yeah. So um, yeah, overall, a bunch of people in their feelings. It's fine. And then, yeah, it is ironic. Cardona was supposed to work Ricky Starks on that show he got pulled up from. Adding, hmm. adding to the irony of all of this. Hmm. So um, I don't know. Cardona's been hinting a lot about how he's ready to get off the indies and wants to, and wants to get signed somewhere. And generally, if you start talking like that, you're not going to WWE because if you're going to WWE, you just say nothing. So, right. Yeah. I don't know if they're thinking of bringing him in full time. If look, if ring of honor is going to be a TV show, which they're once again, trying, which is the whole reason Jericho won the belt and all that, uh, you know, Cardona is another, face people have seen before that you could add to the ROH roster if it gets on true TV or wherever they think they're going to find a space for it. So what well, someone, I saw someone casually throw this around on Twitter this week. And I think it was one of those engagement farming accounts where mm. they just say a very obvious thing. And then everybody, everybody in the comments is either like, yes or no anyway. Uh, but they were like, you know, Matt Cardona has, uh, he, has proven that he moves merchandise. He proves that he does digital views. He's in the best shape of his career. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. How is this guy on the indies? <laughs> it's like my personal distaste for it. This taste is way too strong. I, I like, I'm fine. I'm fine with Cardona and I respect him. It's just, you know, I just never really thought a lot of him as a wrestler. And that that's fine. But and I think I think some of his shtick is embarrassing, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have a problem with Cardona. Anyway, my non problem with him aside, <laughs> I thought this tweet was dead on. How isn't this guy signed somewhere? Even if he's not uh prime Hiroshi Tanahashi in the ring. <laughs> he's absolutely he he does everything you Every ancillary thing you want a, a, a pro wrestler to do, <laughs> he'll do media. He'll do, he sells merch. He has ideas. How how is he not signed? I don't get it. Anyway, well, he pretty famously did not. I don't think he was one of Paul's favorites. Yeah, he kind of fired back at Paul, and Paul kind of took a shot at him, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's but... like he dared to. He doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't shy away from pointing out things like. The night he's at Madison Square Garden and the fans are chanting for him when The Rock is in the ring, him coming yeah. backstage after laying out Ziggler or whatever they did with him that night. And the first thing he sees is Triple H walking up to him, asking him why he dyed his hair. Yeah. Like yeah. he he <laughs> makes a point to point out that Paul didn't like him. <laughs> like, yeah. So I under, I kind of understand. That being said, his wife does work there and it seems like you could. And CM Punk is there. <laughs> Yes. So like if we're if we're worried about, you know, pa Paul is clearly willing to book guys he hates if he thinks they can make him some money. He he booked 
Car- I mean, he signed Carlito and Booker T, and Booker T has is, is on NXT commentary every week. He right. buried those guys in 07 and feels bad about it. Right. So, yeah, you would you would think there's a space for a guy like Cardona, even if they slotted him. I don't know. Maybe he wouldn't want to come back and work NXT. But I was going to say, even if they wanted to try to put him in NXT. Um, he, but then you weren't. You're basically working from home. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Chelsea's yeah. well liked there and is really killing it this yeah, go around. He's awesome. I would I would yeah, I don't get it. But yeah, between the two the two rest the two major US wrestling promotions that have to fill up nine hours of television <laughs> each per week, you'd think there'd be a spot for for Matt Cardona across one of those hours. There's worse, much worse guys in the ring on both shows. Oh, agreed. And I, I'll give Cardona a lot of credit. He had Adam Copeland's best AEW match, in my opinion. When he uh, came no out, argument. When he came out for that surprise, and I think they were in Toronto or somewhere in Canada for that show. Yeah. And they did the open challenge deal. I thought that was leagues better because they had like a 2006 WWE match instead yeah. of Adam trying to have a PWG match. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, they work to their strengths. Yep. Um, and uh, uh, Dolph Ziggler's brother suing AEW. I don't know. He's say- suing AEW saying that they blame him because they had to fire CM Punk. I don't quite understand. I don't. I, I-, I don't know how this stands up to the least bit of scrutiny, but um, I don't know. CM Punk and AEW and litigation and one of the Ziggler boys, uh, any of the surprising to you. I mean, we knew that Ryan Nemeth was one of one of Punk's enemies. Uh, that that much was clear. Oh, for sure. Um, him being frustrated by how the company treated him. I mean, that was that was one of the the major talking points. I think even even the most what people would consider the most quote unquote in the tank for AEW or the Young Bucks or whoever uh, news reporters talking about these stories at the time were like, yeah, they're not. They're telling people different things. They're not getting people on the same page. They're not getting people in the same room to talk this stuff out. They're just like trying to hold the peace by like telling different people different things and sequestering parts of the locker room. And it's like, yeah. And then these worker drone types like Ryan Nemeth, who were just kind of there because he was friends with the right people and got him got himself a job. And then he was there to do jobs on Ring of Honor or whatever. Um, they end up caught in the middle of it. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, I don't know about how that's going to work when it comes to suing AEW for uh, for 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 punishment. I guess they they punished him because of that issue or whatever. But so there, there's also this weird thing where like the report, I give I give Fightful credit for getting a scoop because they're out there trying to get scoops. On the other hand, the way this they wrote up this scoop was like borderline embarrassing um they just didn't do a very good job explain it was cl- clear as mud after <laughs> and so nemeth sends this complaint uh to AEW, and he's seeking financial consideration and says that at one point they offered him they wanted him to sign an nda related to all of this and they offered him approximately three years salary <laughs> three years salary to sign an NDA and go away. And then uh, he wanted to talk about it. And then they pulled it. They pulled the offer. And whoops. And he doesn't know why. <laughs> um, so it is it is still unclear to me if he's actually suing. If this is actually in court currently. Or what is going on. Yeah, just it seemed like, yeah. Like, and if it's just like, hey, I just I'm mad that I feel like I got blamed for something when I was really just caught in the middle of a larger, weirder problem. I know one yes. of the things in Sean Ross Sapp's report was like, he's like, I'm less mad about punk not liking me because you're allowed to not like me and more that the company was like, no, everything's fine. Everything's great. And then they just didn't book me for three months. And <laughs> Right. You know, it's like, yeah, it's it sucks. And again, I mean, that around that time or right after the punk stuff is also when they kind of overhauled and started bringing in more like uh, infrastructure 
to maybe insulate Tony Khan from these sorts of accusations going forward. More executives and creative team types and Mm -hmm. HR types and yes, administration, as you said, yes. Yes. Um, So yeah, it feels like this problem probably already has been addressed. Like the frustration he's expressing hopefully is, has already been addressed by all of those changes they made after the punk stuff. But if his point is just like, yeah, it was a real S show over that summer. I'm like, yeah, man, I think, I think that's been pretty well, (laughs) pretty well documented by now, but I mean, yeah, it sucks. It sucks if he was singled out in a way that other people that had issues with punk weren't that's that's not fair but it's also again this happens a lot when a guy who is not a big star runs afoul of a guy who is a big star (laughs) ask jtg about you know running afoul of john cena you know like yeah you're gonna tell me that story i don't remember that one that is in jtg's book he tells a story about he was he did some sort of interview for like a WWE magazine and in it, he used the phrase like loyalty and respect. And he, at the same time, he was trying to get like a sun, like sunglasses merch made so he could put them, like give them out to people like Brett did. Right. And Cena came up to him and was like, what was it all this about? Like the loyalty and respect stuff in this. And he's like, Oh, I just misspoke. I, I wasn't trying to steal your, your phrase or anything. He's like, okay, that's fine. Um, that sunglass deal is not happening for you. <laughs> That's how JTG <laughs> tells the story. Okay. Interesting. You know, seeing current day John Cena, who's a robot who just exists to sell his products. Mm-hmm. I have a really hard time reconciling that guy with the guy who apparently jettisoned JTG's merchandising hopes and uh, lobbied to put a political hit at out on the nexus (laughs) yes and alex riley yeah or just decided that yeah he wasn't feeling it and they were going he was he was squashing those guys i think i'm going over clean tonight brother (laughs) i think it's a big boot and a leg drop tonight brother (laughs) yeah i don't know all right well uh, i've been talking for a long time uh is there anything else not really they're finishing up world tag league in new japan they teased hiromu turning on naito but didn't, but I still think those guys are probably going to end up wrestling each other at the Tokyo Dome because what else are they going to do? And we got two nights. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we somehow ended up with two nights at the Tokyo <laughs> Dome again. <laughs> somehow two nights has returned. This this year it's uh, Saturday morning and Sunday morning in the US, I think. That's a bit more palatable. Then. It's a horrible. It's still horrible. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, if we're on your Spotify wrapped, go ahead and post that. Thanks for listening. Thanks for uh, thanks for supporting the show. Tell a friend. And uh, Spotify wrapped. Is it a marketing tool for a giant corporation that price gouges and fired a bunch of people responsible for putting rap together this year? And so it told you your top five songs and those were not the correct top five songs anyway yeah let's do some uh let's carry some water for spotify and uh if we were on your spotify wrapped go ahead and drop that and uh if you know anyone under 30 who who, uh likes wrestling uh you know just tell them we're not jerks and uh and to listen to the show so say we all till next time i'm ethan (laughs) i'm liam we'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life Adios. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Uh, what do you think about the, the Sleepy Joe pardoning his uh, son? I mean, it would be nice if one time the outgoing president used the lame duck uh, session here to do something, you know, 
good, but look, <laughs> on the list of things I have a problem with Joe Biden's presidency for, pardoning his crackhead son is pretty low on the list, honestly. <laughs> with the exception of the fact that it's there are plenty of people who are not related to the president who are currently rotting in a jail cell for nonviolent drug crimes that Joe could be pardoning, pardoning and instead he pardoned his his own son who not only did these crimes but uh loved to film himself doing them so uh you know it's it's not a it's not good but who cares you know his are we, are we worried about Joe's legacy after he <laughs> After he maybe on purpose tanked it for the last two years and delivered us onto the uh, the results of this this past election in indirect and direct ways, like here, whatever here you're going down anyway. People are gonna hate you no matter what. So yeah, whatever, whatever. Get yours before you get out. Try to get your dumb kid out of out of dodge. Unbe- unbelievable. Um... You said something at the end of it that was going to set me off, and I can't remember what it was. So, was it that his legacy is ruined either way, or yeah, maybe? Oh, okay, yeah. So, um, we talked about this off the air, and you told me that, like, um, essentially, you I forget the exact phrasing you used, but you're like, Biden and Harris or Harris tied herself to the Biden campaign, and Biden tied himself to the anyway it was a suicide a death trap a suicide pack as bruce springsteen uh once said mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh how do you how does a party let a guy uh <laughs> torpedo them well i think if there's anything uh the <laughs> The Democratic Party has proven over the last couple of decades it's it's a horrific ineptitude and uh, being and just a general uh, terror and worry at the idea of ever showing any sort of breaking. They're they're not like you know when when Mike when Mike Johnson and Matt Gates are yelling at each other on the floor like Republicans will go after each other in a way that Democrats just won't do especially not after the top of the party. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they're just don't, don't want to rock the boat. Don't want to get blasted as not a team player because then, you know, Nancy Pelosi will endorse your primary opponent next time or whatever. Um, so it's like, yeah, they don't, they don't want the, because Biden is the current King of the democratic party and you're not allowed to speak ill of the King. That's, that's the way that the Democratic Party has, for the most part, operated over the last couple of decades. But then why did he let himself be replaced? I guess it got so bad. I guess they got, it got so bad they thought they could squeeze him in. Like, that's that because I guess because he literally couldn't talk. Like, <laughs> that's what it took. Right. Because they let him stay in until July or whatever. Before they, before Pelosi or whoever made the the backroom deal of like get out or this is going to get bad for you, but like they let him stick around a long time, and then he went on national TV in a debate and couldn't complete a sentence, and that was finally the straw. That's what it felt like to me. Like if he doesn't do that debate, if he ducks in cover for another few months, he's probably on the ballot in November. <laughs> you think he would have won? No. Okay. All right. I, th- I think people as we maybe talked about right after the election, I think people were looking at wallets. People were looking at gas prices, grocery prices, and pulled the lever for the person not currently in charge. Yeah, that makes sense. And also a lot of people stayed home. I stayed home. It yeah. doesn't matter. I live in Maryland. My vote doesn't sure. count. <laughs> but it is an anecdotal you know, increase we can see in the total amount of votes cast that Trump won a in a in something approaching a landslide while getting 4 million fewer votes than he got four years ago when he lost. Right. right. So like a lot of people that came out for sleepy Joe in 2020 didn't, and couldn't even be arsed to do a mail-in ballot or, or vote early or whatever. So, right. Yeah. 
I um logged on to try to do the uh mail in ballot and uh the site wasn't working properly and I was like, This is way too much trouble. I will just not vote this year. <laughs> so stupid. Yeah. Stupid human being. Okay. Well, are you ready to talk about pro wrestling? Yeah, let's get started. Okay. I try to keep on keeping on. 